Hey everyone, it's Cuds. So I'm back again for another tutorial and today we're gonna talk about Xiao Yu versus Zafina, the Spider Queen. I've heard a, a couple of concerns about how to approach this character and after me using Xiao Yu and going against Zafina in multiple, just, just multiple matches and this matchup is a little weird. It's like a roly-poly trying to fight against a spider. What I've I've kind of came up with here is a couple of tips uh, and tricks to how to deal with one of Zafina's best just traits, which is her stances, which includes Mantis, Scarecrow, and Tarantula. All three of these stances have some sort of evasive property, but though they also go into transitions. And while fighting different Zafina players, I learned that sometimes it can be a, a little overwhelming trying to escape those stances. And when it comes to stances, I always, I always believe that there's always a way to get around something. So I labbed multiple situa situations and common ones that Safina players do use. And so today I made a little, little guide to help you shout you players out who feel like you're struggling in this matchup. So take a look. We're gonna talk about one of the most commonly used moves from Zafina. Down three, that lovely down three. And there's two versions of it. So there's just down three and it leaves her in crouch for a little bit and then she rises back up. That's plus two. Now there's another version and this is the version that's just so pleasant. So it's down three hold. Now this move puts her in mantis. This move puts Zafina in Mantis and, and it becomes plus four. So this is when challenging her becomes risky and the follow-up moves to when she does down three into Mantis is, is when it becomes, it, when, when people start to become more hesitant. So we're gonna start with a couple of just situations here, okay. So regular down three by itself. It's 15. Xiaoyu is gonna have a hard time because she can't launch this. This hop kit does not work with this. She can't launch this. However, there's hope. She has wall rising one four. It's a way to deal with it. Puts her in back turn. Which if you're gonna block it, that's Xiaoyu's max punish for that. So it's not a launch, but it's still something that she gets for it. And she can get some other mix-ups for it as well. Now, if you do happen to get hit by down three, that's when things change. Now, like I showed, down three by itself is plus two. So you have some time to kind of challenge because it's only plus two but let's set Sabina to do something right after down three okay so we did down three into wall rising four now that beat us out it's plus two without mantis and with mantis it is plus four and this is one of those moves where you're not really interrupting it from crouch. This move puts you in crouch. So your options to challenge from crouch as Xiaoyu are limited, if any, because you will get beaten out by her while rising four every single time. All right, so we will do down three into while rising four. All right. I tried to do a four right there, while rising four. Her wall, her wall rising four beats me out every single time. So that's one, one move. We'll try down jab, does not work against her. Nothing else works against her. I'm getting beat out of everything. Since down three is plus two, it's leaving me in crouch. I don't have anything to challenge Zafina with. Her wall rising four will beat me out every single time. Now, 
There's an option. Parry. She'll do it again. And it leaves me a plus seven. It leaves me an advantage. So that is an option if you know that's what the Zafina player will constantly go for. There is another version of down three. It's not just down three like that. It is There is down three in the Mantis, which you simply do by, press, by pressing down three and then you hold the down. Now this changes many things. So first we're going to talk about down three into one of Zafina's options, which is in Mantis, which is down three. This is a move that I've seen Zafina players use as like a test to see how you respond to her in this stance, in, in Mantis. So we will start with down three into three. So that's what we're gonna recreate. Down three into three. And she can block from this stance. So that's huge. Down three into three. Okay. Now, this down three on hit from Mantis is negative one. So we can challenge. Down three, start frames on her, it's 15. It's 15. So we can try to respond to it. And I did while rising four right here. We traded. We traded right there. Most of the time, we're trading, it seems. I'm going to try up forward four. Now, up forward four, it crushed. This move crushed. It crushed the down three. So this is one option you can use to deal with Safina. If she's going to, if they're going to use the down three as a test for Mantis. Even up forward three plus four is a great way to crush her. So we do it again. Yep. So I found that some of the best options from this, if you want to use a move to deal with this down three from Mantis, is either up forward four or up forward three plus four because they crush that low. It starts to get a little weird when you try to step this move. or even use AOP for it. So I'll show you what happens when we use AOP for it. Okay. If it's on hit, we can't really, res we can't really respond without getting hit. Because she's right in front of us, we can't step because we're already putting crouch. So AOP is one of those things. It's not really in the question for this. But if we block it, let's see what happens. You can walk it. But it's a little difficult. This move has a little bit, it has some, it has some tracking on it. And when we block, we cannot, we cannot step actually. It's really hard to step after blocking this. It's literally, it's like stopping us from stepping the way that we want. So both ways, it's really difficult to, to block this move and then try to step. It becomes very difficult for her. So sometimes it's just better to take the hit. Or if you're going to block, then just do... Your wall rising one four punish, especially if if she's in mantis after this, you have to do your wall rising one four. When she's when she does this move in mantis, when she when she goes into down three into mantis, it becomes negative thirteen. Compared to if you just did down three by itself, it becomes negative fifteen. Zafina's down three one from mantis also gets weird i've tried stepping it it gets a little funky too so i will go into three and then do 
For Mantis, I did down 3-1. Now, let's see. Let's try again. Let's try stepping this way. It wished this way. It sometimes whips. It's a little odd. When that is the case, though, definitely take advantage of that. There's a couple of different things I learned about this move. Okay, so we're going to do... All right. So, puts you in crouch. You can't step it. So we're going to block the down three this time. But then we're going to try and step the one. Okay, we're going to try... We're going to try blocking the down three and then trying to step. Now, it whiffed right there. Not sure why. It whiffed again. Okay, let's try one more time. This is whiffing from right here. Hmm. Since that is the case, since that does seem to be, whi be whiffing pretty consistently... That could be to your advantage. It's really hard for me to step right. I'm getting hit by that. And now when you're putting crouch like that, stepping to the right can be very difficult um, on 1P. Another sequence, though, that Zafina players will use, which can make it easier, is... Down three to down three one into down three one. That this is that's what hap this is what happens. This is something I've dealt with. I'll block the first part. And even if the down three hits, as long as I block the one, I and I try and step to prepare for the second down three one that just happened right there. I'm good because the one will whiff. Now, this is only to the left, though. Only to the left. So, we're going to block this. And it whiffs yet again. This move whiffed. Now, that is very consistent. And Zafina players will use this move twice in Mantis to try and catch you stepping. They'll try and uh, pressure you. But, that's a little small thing that, that if she does the down three and the one whiffs again... You can launch her. So that's very, very beneficial. Now, AOPing from this is is different. Because stepping is another thing. But AOPing from this is very tough. It's pretty hard for me to interrupt that. It's more beneficial for us to sidestep right AOP. Because it's like a built-in double sidestep. But from the left, it's almost like it puts her right in front of her again. So, so with Mantis and Mantis down 3-1, I would not recommend using AOP on that. I, I definitely recommend stepping. Definitely stepping it. If these Athena players testing you twice with that move. Now, if it's just once... If it's just once, then just blocking the three or, or taking the, getting hit by the three and blocking the one, it's not bad. It is negative nine. So you can try and you know, challenge and test because she is at negative nine with that. So let's try an option. Let's, let's do a follow-up that's different after the Mantis down three one. Down three, one, and then two. Okay. Now we're able to interrupt her because she's so she's at such a like she's she's at negative she's negative. So we're able to interrupt that. So we have all those different options. So that's great. That is great for us. So let's just 
one of the ways to kind of understand down 3-1 from Mantis, because it's negative, you might not be able to, you, you can't, it's, it's hard for her to, it's hard for her to step. It's hard for Xiaoyu to step, but if that Zafina player does down, uh, Mantis down 3-1, you know that you can challenge, you can challenge whether it be a mid, whether it be maybe like a launcher or, but something that will hit her mid or like mid high, like it scoops up. Now let's talk about the next move from Mantis, which is Mantis 2. Mantis 2 is, it hurts. It hurts really, really bad. It's negative 14 on block. But the way I usually see this move is, this move is usually hitting. But I, I'll show you all. So we're going to go into Mantis. Now we're going to block that. And it, on counter hit, it gives a launch. It is scary. This move, up close, is negative 14. Mantis 2 on block is negative 14. So if we block this move... We can punish it. So that's the great part. Mantis 2 is 14. It's negative 14 on block. I'll show that here. Do we have our block to show? Block. And we get a shoulder. Or maybe you want to go the mix-up route. And you want to do down for one because you can get mix-ups from back turn. It just depends on what you want to do. But for that, for that full damage, doing a shoulder would be the most reasonable thing to do compared to doing down for one, which is only eleven damage, but the shoulder. But the shoulder is 25, 25 damage. So keeping that in mind, use a shoulder to punish Mantis 2. Let's set up the sequence now of down 3 on hit into 2. Because down 3 is plus 4 on hit, the 2, set it, it's there just in case you want to press a button. And this... People get hit by this so much. All right, here we go. Down three into two. All right, so I'm going to try pressing right here, just to show. Right away, right away, I got counter hit. Okay, so while rising four gets beat out. I did do a forward three plus four right there, which which resulted in me not getting, not getting comboed, but I still getting floated. I'll try and down jab. I cannot down jab. But that is a setup. That is a frame trap. Because down three on hit is plus four. You try and press something, you're getting mantis twoed. You're getting slapped. So we have an option from it. Even on hit, you can parry. I still think the parry is a nice way to break up the, the momentum that a Safina player could get for getting into the stance and starting to do mix-ups. Not a bad option. One plus four parry works. The spin does not work from that. Not the spin parry. So one plus four, not a bad option. Not a bad option whatsoever. Shall you can't step this. She can't step this. To the left, she can't. And since down three puts us in crouch, we're, we can't step to the right either. We're stuck. Even if we block it, we can't step it to the left. We can't step it to the left. To the right, though, we cannot. So just something to be aware of. Left, we can if we block down three. We try and step right after blocking it, does not happen. 
Let's see what happens when you block and go on AOP. We can. And let's see if we can do AOP after down three on hit. Let's try it. Let's give it a go. We can. We are able to. We're able to get a nice, nice combo off of that. And and I even sent Zafina to block after that. So that's perfect. That is perfect for Xiaoyu in this situation. Because Zafina players will also test you. They'll also test you with um, down three into Mantis. Into Mantis 2. Because it is a frame trap. I would like to also discuss the full sequence of the Mantis 2. Because she Zafina does have a full string from it. And that is 2-1-4. Gives a wall splat as well. I'm, I'm blocking it. I'm block it's negative thirteen. So show you gets. She should get a shoulder for this. Because back four four might be kind of tough for her. And yeah, back four four. Let's see. Oh, let's play this fourteen. We'll get a shoulder for this. We will get a shoulder. So Xiao Yu gets a shoulder for punishing that. Seems like it kind of get puts a little weird stun on her. But you can punish this full move, Mantis 214, with a 13 frame move. So for Xiao Yu, that will be a shoulder. Another odd move from Zafina from Mantis is Mantis 1. Mantis 1. But not just Mantis 1 alone, but Mantis 1, 3 as well. So, so Mantis 1. So if you try and press after hit, getting hit by that down 3, Mantis 1 can also come out. But usually what's the scariest is when she goes into 1, 3. Puts her in Scarecrow, and she's plus 9. Leaves this woman in plus 9. Lady, you don't need to be plus nine here. <laughs> so scary. Scary situation, right? So, let's talk about a few ways we can deal with that Mantis transition. Because it goes from Mantis to 1-3 and to Scarecrow. And then she can do follow-ups after that. So, I'll just kind of mess around with the follow-up as well. Okay, record. So first, we'll start with Mantis, the Mantis part. Down three. Down three into one. All right. We can't interrupt. I tried while rising four. Can't do anything right there. My up four, three plus four does not work. None, nothing is working. Down jab, up four, three plus four doesn't work. How about maybe a parry? Let's see if that works. Parry does work right here. Parry is a perfect option right here. Awesome. But now I'm sure you're wondering, Cuds, can I step it on block though? Let's see if we can. You can. Both ways. And on hit, you can as well. And this is really good. Remember, on one P though, you're only gonna be able to step to the left. To the right, you're not able to step because it's leaving you in crouch. So you can't step to the right. Now, let's try use uh try the same situation versus Safina, but let's try. AOP. And it works. And we don't even have to step for it. We can just go right into it. There you have it. So you can step this move to the right. Excuse me. You can step this move to the, you can step this move to the left and you can also AOP it even after getting hit by down three. Where it gets a little tricky is when 
it becomes one three into other mix-ups so let's try it out all right we'll do down three one three this move on block is zero so that's awesome but we're going to talk about the defending part first after getting hit by the down three both parts whiff both of those whiff. and you can walk the whole sequence which is wonderful for Xiaoyu even on hit from down three you can step that is great perfect for Xiaoyu which tells your opponent hey I'm aware of your stance transitions I know the weaknesses of them it's perfect now you can now now that you say that you can AOP it and you can step it to you can step to the left and then you can AOP just straight in front of her this is where it'll get a little weird that's one option I'll do because this is a sequence that I have dealt with. Now that whiffs. That follow up whiff from, from Scarecrow. That Scarecrow 2 whiffed, which is really good. Now let's see what happens if we try and do that on hit. From the one three. And three, two. All right. We can't evade that. If it's on hit, it changes everything because it's plus nine. We can't move after that. We're gonna hit, we're gonna get hit by the scarecrow too. So our best option right there would be to parry instead. If we end up getting hit by that. It'll cover it'll cover mid options and high options. And it won't cover lows, the parry won't, but that by that point you probably have some sort of a read on your opponent. So on hit going into AOP it's not gonna happen right there and also on hit if you're trying to if you're trying to challenge this let's get that again mm -hmm. challenging this on hit you can't step either way so then at that point it's better to just block Since one three Mantis one three on block is zero, we should be able to challenge. If we try and challenge the power crush, it's gonna get nasty. But at least we can step it. We have the option to challenge, which is great. We can even walk it both ways. Yeah, both ways easily. Shall you can even do I'm pretty sure AOP from it. She can easily do AOP from it as well. So that's perfect for her. Being able to sidestep right AOP the follow up of uh, Mantis one four. One Safinus and Scarecrow is huge for Xiaoyu in dealing with some of those those mix-ups. Because I've dealt with this before. Mantis 1-3. One, 1-3. Three. One, three. And then they're in Scarecrow. And so then I'm right in front of them. And obviously, Scarecrow 4 is not the only option that you can that you'll deal with or 
will be thrown at you. So I'll show another, I'll show another situation versus Athena. And because we blocked the one three, we're able to get that step and we win the AOP. In Scarecrow, it's almost like Zafina's more linear that way. Let's try Scarecrow, Scarecrow down forward four, which will put Zafina back into, into Mantis. That in itself will be hard to AOP. We can't walk it that way. And we can't walk it left either. So since we can't walk it left or right without getting hit, our next best option might be to block. And if we block, it's negative 14. Let's see if maybe our back one beats it out, which it does. Back one beats it out easily. If we get hit by it though, hit by the one three, obviously things change. It makes it, it makes it just even twice as difficult to step. So we can't, but if we block the Mantis one three, we have a couple of different possibilities there whether it be to block it, get the punish, or we can do back one if we block the Mantis 1-3. Now, if we try and do it on hit, we can't. We can't do back, we can't challenge with back one because we, we don't have the frames for it. And she's plus nine, she's plus nine after that. Let's try getting hit by Mantis 1-3 and let's try to hop kick or a 4 3 plus 4. Wow. At least we'll be able to evade right there. That's not something I expected. So I'll show you the situation again. Down three. So it'll be down three, one, three, and a down forward four. So the whole thing for us is to try and stop the the, the pressure, the, the, the very strong pressure from those stance transitions and the stances in general. So even being able to crush that low with a forward four or a up forward three plus four is huge. Let's try that again. On hit. One, three, four. All right. And we were able to at least still deal with the, we were still at least able to deal with the move. We were even able to jump over it. And Xiaoyu can even do up forward up forward one plus two and that is awesome that's another way she can deal with it and this is on hit so it's great that she has those three responses to it she has the up forward four She has the up forward three plus four. It puts her in back turn as well. So even with dealing with that move, Xiaoyu has her evasive options to deal with that as well on hit because on hit, from uh, getting hit by Mantis one, three, and then trying to AOP is not gonna work. We tested that, but the other three options I just showed are 
solid ways of dealing with that transition. I showed the transition to Scarecrow from Mantis. Mantis, one, three. Once Zafina goes into Mantis 1-3, she's in Scarecrow. So now I'll talk about those specific moves from Scarecrow that AOP can deal with and, and maybe some of the ones that AOP can't really deal with. So Scarecrow 4. I kind of showed this a little bit. We're going to do the same sequence that I've been doing and then we're going to implement 4. First, I'll, I'll show you just the normal properties of Scarecrow 4. But this move can be stepped. It can be stepped both ways. But I'm guessing, I'm assuming that usually what's happening is I'm able to launch her after because the Safina player is trying to do something afterwards. Let's try it out. Let's try out the sequence. Let's try it out. Okay, let's just say I block. It's because she did something right after it. I'll try to be a little quicker. I won't be able to do it twice. Yep, I wasn't able to. Oh, let's try Scarecrow 4 and go back into Mantis. We'll go back into Stance. So that's a little different, but let's try launching her. And we can do that because she's already, she's already up, she's, she's already done the move. She can't block from the stance. She can't block from the stance. So that's good for us. So we can just, we can still launch her. I did deal with a situation once where the Scarecrow 4, I blocked it. I was late on the punish because it, I was like, whoa, that, that came out of nowhere. And then... The Zafina player rolled away from me because I was too late on punishing it. It's 13. So you want the right punish for that. And you want to you want to hit her right away. Because the moment you kind of delay it. you won't be able to get her. Because, because the Power Crush looks so launch punishable, I have seen other players try and launch it with their 14 frames or their more launch, like their, their, their launchers, their launchers. And it doesn't work because that's the wrong punish, so Zafina's able to roll away. Let's try it with Xiao Yu's cross lifting palms. And we're still able to do that though. Probably depends on the uh, launcher. If it, um, I believe if that launcher's like a high, then she'll be able to roll away. That seems to be like specifically for characters who have those kinds of launchers. I know, I know I showed how Shao Yu deals with like the, the mantis to scarecrow uh, transitions some, and I even showed a little bit about scarecrow four and evading it and dealing with it with AOP and sidestepping. So I'll recreate the situation again though. So you all get it. So, so y'all can get an idea for what I'm talking about. Alright, this sequence. 
which ends in Scarecrow 4. The way you deal with it, you can step it one, you can step it to the left and to the right. And I was also able to step it to the, to the right. So now that that's the case and we're, we blocked that, let's see if we can now AOP it as well. You can, you can AOP it. But you can't sidestep left AOP it. It just puts it right back in front of you. You can sidestep right AOP it. And, and that is so useful for, for, uh, for Shao Yu. Now I will try back turn three plus four as a way to deal with it. And she can, but that's because I'm sidestepping right first. Let's see if I do it without stepping. I can do it without stepping too. I can evade it without stepping. This is so important. Yep, Xiao Yu's able to do her back turn three plus four, and she's able to do her her AOP as well. She's able to do her back turn stance and her uh, AOP stance to evade the Scarecrow four. Scarecrow four, on block is negative 13. So you get a shoulder for it. As shall you, you get a shoulder. Might even be able to get a back four four. Perfect. And we're also able to get a back four four. So she gets a shoulder and she also gets a back four four for it. Perfect. I have been able to launch this move, uh, Scarecrow 4, but the reason why that happens is because the Zafina player is doing another move from Scarecrow right after they do the, the Scarecrow 4. Sometimes the move comes out so fast, you'll, you're, you're kind of like, did, did I just get hit by that? Or did I just block that? Like, that just, it just came out. So when that's the case, you can, you can respond with something else. And usually I do a launcher. And because that will beat her out of her other options. So I'll recreate those. All right. So that's the situation. So now do the full one. And I'll do a follow up, and, but we'll block the Scarecrow 4 first. And we'll see if our launcher beats out. And it does. We try to power crush right, another power crush right after. And since she can't block in this stance, that's really good for us. I'll do that follow up as well. We'll do the Scarecrow 4 part, then we'll do Scarecrow 3 plus 4. Three plus four. Still able, able to hit her out of everything. But yes, if you're going to, if you're going to deal with Scarecrow 4, you need to make sure that you respond quickly whether it be AOP, whether it be you're punishing it with a shoulder, whether it be if you're punishing with back 4-4, four, four, or whether it be that you're punishing it with uh, back your, your back turn. But you have to make sure you are on that, like you are responding to that quickly or else Zafina could roll away one two she might be able to respond in some other way that puts you in another uh, unfortunate stance situation so scarecrow four can be stepped aop'd and back turned we talked about scarecrow four scarecrow four is was waffle and you can AOP it, and you can use your back turn stance to evade it as well. 
one of the other moves I like to talk about from Scarecrow that's not as easy to deal with and catches me and other players a lot is Scarecrow 1 plus 2. Scarecrow 1 plus 2 is it's 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 it to me it seems almost like it's an impossible step. I will recreate the situation. See how that move kind of just like tracks and like covers a lot of space and distance? It it's really hard to get away from. Like, I'm walking it. Zafina said, you're not getting away. So because that's the case, let's just dis let's discuss some defensive options to deal with Scarecrow 1 plus 2. Let's try AOP first. We have to sidestep it right first, then AOP. That's the only way this move will work. See, I'm stepping right first. And I have to kind of already be walking. For Scarecrow 1 plus 2, stepping it left and right kind of quickly can be hard unless you're already walking it as you all saw i'm gonna i'm gonna show it show it again Scarecrow um, one plus two all right it seems to be easier for me to walk both ways it doesn't seem too hard to walk both ways but that's because i'm stepping i'm stepping before she gets into the stance i'm literally walking i'm walking the the uh subpoena before she goes into scarecrow so that leaves me off axis but right when she goes into scarecrow and i try stepping it's really hard to It, it's pretty easy to, to get clipped by this. So instead of guessing on if you, you stepped or walked it correctly, I suggest two things. Either AOP or potentially just block. For the AOP defensive option for it, you have to sidestep right a little bit first, then AOP. And even once she goes into Scarecrow, you can still do it. And it leaves you away from Zafina and you can punish her. It's, 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 it's a safer option than trying to walk it left and right and potentially getting clipped and then having to deal with some sort of other stance transition mix up. Let's try Ling's back turn from this. That works as well. Her back turn stance works just as well for um to deal with scarecrow one plus two so right as she goes into it you can usually just back turn but it's a little um it's a little uh inconsistent so to make it more consistent you will sidestep right then do back turn three plus four or back back three plus four you will do back three plus four and that is that ensures that 
you get away from it. And it's more consistent that way. So stepping Scarecrow 1 plus 2 is a dangerous route. Does, or, but walking it can be consistent. Seems a little more to the left, but to the right it does seem a little off. Mm. But to me, the safest options seem to be blocking it, AOPing it, side, well, sidestepping right, then AOPing, and sidestepping right, then back turning. Those options seem to be more consistent. With her transitions, Zafina going from uh, stance to stance and transitioning and then doing her one plus two has a different effect. It is a lot more that you feel like you're dealing with. So I'll recreate the same situation I created before while doing the scarecrow move. Okay, so we did down three, one, three into one plus two. You get hit by this. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to block the 1-3, then we're going to use our defensive options that we talked about. We're going to block the 1-3 from Zafina, from Mantis, and then we're going to deal with the follow-up, which is the Scarecrow 1 plus 2. See if our defensive options work, which is our AOP and our back turn. Our back turn, our back turn uh, move, back turn stance. We block that. And AOP works. Let's try again. Okay, let's try back turn. Forgot to step that time. It's a little harder. Oh, there it is. But this seems a little inconsistent. We get to walk a little bit more. This one seems a little odd. Let's try doing a little earlier. Oh, hmm. Looks like we have to walk it first and then do back turn. But I would recommend AOP instead. Or 3 plus 4. Because 3 plus 4 seems to work too. It seems to work. Or parry. But doing back turn seems a little risky. Maybe if we do it a little earlier. Yeah, it's just too inconsistent. So, since back turn is not as consistent or it's very difficult to use it as a defensive option against Scarecrow 1 plus 2 after we block the Mantis 1, 3. I would recommend if you're dealing with the transitions and the stances of Zafina, and it's like this, this situation, definitely go for AOP. That's more reliable. AOP is more reliable in that. Sidestep, right, AOP. We'll do that. That's safer. That worked that time. Huh. Still seems to be a little inconsistent. So right after she does the one three, you have to, you have to step. Okay. The back turn still seems a little odd. Hmm. What if I hold back instead? It's because I'm holding back instead. It's because I'm holding back. Let's see what happens when I just block instead of holding back. It's because I'm holding back. It puts more distance between us. That's why that works. That's why that worked. Well, looks like if you're holding back and you choose to defend with AOP or back turn, it'll work. But if you're not holding back for 
if you want to use the back turn option against Scarecrow 1 plus 2, it will not work the same because it's not it's not like giving you that distance it seems. It's not kind of pushing you away from her, which will which helps with the evasion of back 3 plus 4. The little bit I want to talk about this dance is Tarantula. I want to talk about Tarantula's dance, and I want to talk about Tarantula 1 and Tarantula 3. It, they're a little weird, and it's actually kind of a unique stance. So I'll do Tarantula 1. Tarantula 1 on hit is plus 5. So you challenging that is going to be difficult, and it won't happen. You're in a trade if you do do something. Unblock. Tarantula 1 is negative 11. So you can just, you can do all rising 4. Good punish. Alright. The combination of Tarantula 1 and 3 is where things get weird. So we're gonna go into tarantula one and then three. So we're gonna hit by the one and then we'll try and respond. Tarantula one is 18 frames, but tarantula three is 14. So we're gonna try and respond with something faster. We're gonna try back one. Let's see what happens when we do it. We trade. It's not really worth the payoff because I lose way more health than Zafina. But it is a trade nonetheless. Let's try another faster move. My down my down two doesn't work. Her tarantula three beats me out. Yeah, I being able to challenge Zafina after she does tarantula one on hit is very hard. Now, let's try stepping it. You can't step it either way on hit. It's plus five, so let's try blocking and stepping. Still cannot step it. Okay, we'll try stepping it to the right as well. Yep, it's very, it's difficult because it's so plus. So, your best option right there is to do the punish, is to do the ball rising four punish or whatever your 11 frame punish is. But if Zafina does another follow up like her, which is, I, I've dealt with this as well, the, her, her tarantula one plus two, you can walk that. So we will do tarantula, we will do tarantula one plus two first. I'll show you all what it's like. Tarantula, one plus two. Move is negative 12 on block. So we get a nice little punch for that. And it's super linear. But this, this tarantula, one plus two, is used as a follow-up to kind of overwhelm you more with her tarantula, her tarantula offense. So I'll, I'll show a situation. And then three, and then... And that's like to keep you there, just in case you try and duck. And then you can just walk it. Yeah, this sequence I've dealt with many a time. And you can just walk that. So we'll get hit by the one, block that, and then... And you can walk this either way. Let's try and defend against that sequence with walking and AOP and then we'll try back turn stance as well. We'll walk, we walk to the left, it worked. So we'll go into tarantula again. Yep, you able to get her back that way as well. AOP. AOP also works. And so does back turn. See if jump over works. Jump over also works. Which is a 
multiple different options she has, but you can't jump the tarantula three, but you can jump tarantula one plus two. And it, so you have a couple of different defensive options against that follow up too. So that was my tips and tricks for dealing with some of the sequences and some of the transitional moves and stances from Zafina, just based on ones that I've experienced during gameplay. I know with me playing Xiao Yu, when I was dealing with it at first, I was like, whoa, like, I wonder if I can AOP this instead of trying to walk everything because Xiao Yu does have standard movement without a without AOP. If she's just stepping and walking, like she isn't like Elisa or Zafina or Lily. So utilizing her AOP in this matchup is huge when the time is right and when Zafina's doing those those uh, those stance transitions. AOP will be your best friend in those situations. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you have any feedback, just let me know. Or if you have any questions about any other types of sequences that Xiaoyu can deal with versus Zafina, just let me know in the comments below. And I, I appreciate you all watching. Take it easy, guys.